Hey guys, it's Susie. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna talk about everything I've done so far to prep for my trip to Korea, which I'm going next month in October for two weeks. It is during the time that BTS is having their concert and I am trying to go, but your girl didn't win the raffle, unfortunately. So we are waiting for general reservations and hopefully I can get a ticket then. But even if I don't get a ticket, I am still gonna be in Busan during that time. I am so excited for this trip, you guys. I have so much plan, so much to do, so many places to go, and I can't wait to share all of the experiences with you guys. Planning this trip has been so stressful. I feel like the last two weeks of my life have just been so hectic. So along with that, it's just like, there's so much to do so let's just start with the basics so travel requirements okay so all of this information is as of today which is september 8th 2022 um these are the things that i found that we need to travel to korea so the most obvious one is you're gonna need a passport um surprisingly i actually got this in august literally a month ago it was two weeks before they announced um yet to come in busan I don't know if you call that fate or what because I just randomly was like, oh, I should renew my passport with no intentions of really going anywhere or doing anything. And mind you, I haven't used a passport since I was a child. So I think it was meant to be. <laughs> but yeah, um, you do need a passport. So if you don't have one, make sure you get one. The next thing that you need to travel to Korea is the K-ETA. This is the Korea Electronic Travel Authorization. This needs to be obtained at least 72 hours before your flight. So for this, I went on the website um, to fill out the application. And to do the application, you're going to need your passport. It asks for all of the information that's on your passport. Um, you also have to upload a photo of yourself. So for me, I actually have an extra passport photo that's printed out. I took a picture of it with my phone and then I cropped and resized the image and uploaded it onto the website. Then I submitted my application and it was approved in less than 24 hours. So they do tell you the processing time is like 24 to 48, but it was really fast for me. I did have a hiccup with the application though. So I got stuck on the part where there's a question on the application that asks you where you're going to be staying in Korea and you have to put in basically like the address of your hotel or Airbnb. I booked an Airbnb but the address I couldn't like pull it up on the website. So I ended up using like a random address. Um, my friend said that they're not going to check and also you can always change it. So you can always go back onto the website and change information. But that was kind of stressful because I was like, what is going on? Why is this address not pulling up? And I started questioning like, did I get scammed? Does my Airbnb not exist? Damn, I guess we'll find out. But. If you guys have the same issue with the application, what I did was I googled like the general area where I was staying in and it gave me basically all the zip codes in that area. What you do is you can just pick a zip code, put it in the postal code, and then once you enter that in, it'll give you like, it generates all the addresses with that zip code. So you would just pick one and then continue with your application and then later on you can log back in and you can change that information. Next is COVID testing. So prior to September 3rd, if you were going to Korea, you actually need a negative COVID test before your flight and also when you arrive. Now, they don't require it before your flight, but you do still have to do it when you arrive to Korea within 24 hours. So an option you have is to do it at the airport in Korea, which is my plan. I actually still need to schedule it, um, but I think that's like the easiest way. So instead of trying to go somewhere else to get it done within 24 hours, just do it when you get to the airport. There is also this thing called Q code. Um, I'm not sure if we still need Q code to go to Korea. Um, that's actually something I need to figure out. So if any of you know and want to help your girl out, please do because I don't really know what it is. Um, I just know it's like this code that they can scan and it's supposed to have your information on there. I think it has to do with like COVID, but I'm not sure. So that I need to figure out. That is pretty much all we need to travel to Korea. If I'm missing anything, please let me know. But to my knowledge, that is all we need. Now, let's talk about like booking Airbnbs and like hotels. So, 
I am going to be staying in Busan for a couple of days um, during the weekend of the concert and when I first booked my flight I was looking at hotels because you know I wanted to get it early so I didn't have to pay so much if I booked later on the second BTS announced their concert all of these hotels got sold out in Busan not only that but like they were skyrocketing their prices it was insane so I seen like regular hotels like the price was four to eight hundred dollars a night it's insane how they were just like skyrocketing these prices after the announcement so I don't know that kind of upset me so I didn't I didn't book so I started looking for Seoul and for Seoul I didn't know if I wanted to do a hotel or if I wanted to do like an Airbnb ultimately after like a few days of like going back and forth of which one I wanted to do I decided to go with Airbnb just because I feel like it's better when you have like a bigger group um, you do have more space because in the hotels there's not much space so in Korea in general what I notice is like their living space is really small um, not only just that but everything is like small so like the beds were like mainly twin beds so I decided to go with Airbnb and let me show you oh my god so stressful building this itinerary and planning everything out so I just booked an Airbnb but one of the besties asked me does it have an elevator and I didn't even think of this thank god she did because it didn't have an elevator and it's on the fourth floor imagine us with all of our luggages going up to the fourth floor by stairs oh my god so now we're looking for another airbnb and let me tell you guys i don't know if anyone else knew but like in korea they have what's called wet bathrooms where everything gets wet um and i can't do that i'm sorry i need some kind of barrier from the shower and the sink and the toilet not everything all in one place actually i'll show you guys okay so this is an airbnb that i found and I was looking at it and I'm like, is that the fucking shower? There's no way, right? Like, that can't be a shower. Then I saw the shower head up here and I'm just like, do you, do you stand here and shower? There's a drain right there. And I, I can't do that, dude. I need some kind of barrier. Also, why is that so high up? Like, how do you even, do you just pull it down? There's so many questions. So eventually I did find one that I really, really liked. Um, it had like an outside patio and everything. But after I booked it, my friend asked me and she's like, Hey, um, I just wanted to check. Do you know if it has an elevator? And I was, I didn't even think, didn't even think to look for one with an elevator. Okay, so she messaged the host and they're like, Oh no, there's no elevators and it's on the fourth floor what how we have to lug everything up the stairs i was so sad because that's not happening so we had to cancel that one and that that airbnb was like perfect there was so much space it was so nice and like the bathroom had a separate shower and a separate toilet so like they were literally not that it had a barrier but they were in different like sections of the house so it was like completely separate which was really nice um but it the no elevator part was just no <laughs> so if you guys are looking to book an airbnb make sure you check that the building has elevators um so after that i found another airbnb which was really cute um it's actually the one that i still have booked right now the only issue i have with this airbnb is like the host is not really responsive like I have questions and he, it's been a week, he hasn't responded to me, he or she hasn't responded to me at all. So I'm kind of just like, well, so I don't know what to do because I don't think that one is fully re, like refundable, but damn, yeah. If I could, I would definitely cancel it and rebook because this person hasn't gotten back to me um, when I first booked the Airbnb they sent me an email and that was it they sent me like an email to their website but as far as like communicating there's no communication at all so hopefully this one works out <laughs> on the bright side it has an elevator so we won't be struggling on that part 
Fast forwarding to this week, the BTS themed hotel packages in Busan were dropped. They released them and this is a funny story because my phone was on do not disturb so I didn't get any notifications and then I was about to go to sleep. So this was the same day that they announced the winners for the raffle and I didn't win so I was like really sad about it at first and I was just like dang like really just sad about it so then <laughs> I was gonna go to sleep I'm like oh, okay whatever we have to try for a general reservation and so right before I was going to sleep I checked my notifications and I saw that they dropped the hotel packages I ran to Twitter so when I got to Twitter I um, was looking at the different hotels and each hotel had a different welcome gift they are sick they could have made them all the same, but they were all different. So I just picked one and then I went in there and I was trying to um, fill out the form. Oh, actually before I got to the form, it had a queue. So I was waiting in the queue and when I finally got in, it opened up like the page and everything was in Korean and I couldn't switch it back. So I tried to use my desktop and on my desktop everything was still in Korean but at least I was able to kind of change it to English on my desktop and so I was doing it on my desktop and phone and I think I finally got through on my phone when I was filling the stuff out and I got to the payment part put in my card information and everything and I hit pay and it said that everything was sold out what? what the fuck? I was like what? I was so mad like you guys don't understand I was livid I was so mad I was like why is the everything is against me today I was like what is going on so me being me even though it says sold out I kept trying so on my desktop it kept showing me rooms that were available and so I was trying on the desktop and on the desktop when I freaking got to the payment page it wouldn't let me enter my card information for some reason it just wouldn't let me enter it and so I'm just like, oh my god, there's still rooms, oh my god, I could still book it, but it's not letting me. So I went back on my phone, and I kept trying on my phone, and then an hour later, after they already said that it was sold out, an hour later, I put in my card information and everything, and it went through. I, oh my god, I was so happy when it went through, but like, I didn't know if it went through. So the final page after you pay, it's all in Korean. So I was like, is that an error message or did I get the room? So I'm just like staring at my phone and I'm like, wait, I should just check if I get like emails. Nothing. So I'm like, fuck, this is probably another error message. And so I'm just like waiting, waiting. And then finally I get an email confirmation saying that I got the room, which I'm so excited for because in Vegas when they did the themed hotels I didn't book one and I was just like dang I wish I would have booked one so I'm really happy that I got this um, and it's gonna be a fun experience and of course I'm gonna show it to you guys but yeah basically now all of my stays for my entire trip has been booked so that's all done and ready um, the only thing that I really still need to book is the BTS exhibition but that's not until next week and I'm already registered for the pre-sale so hopefully I can get a ticket to that but yeah everything's pretty much set um, I just need a shop I need to buy some clothes so I need to do some clothes shopping for Korea everyone keeps telling me to pack light but I'm just like uh, I don't think I can pack light I'm going for two weeks like there's a lot of essentials that I need or at least like a suitcase of clothes everyone's telling me that I can buy them there but I feel like I might overpack besides shopping and just buying things that I may need for the trip I think the only other thing is hoping and praying that I get a ticket to the concert. That's the only other thing. <sighs> and that's not for another 11 days. The waiting game. It's always the waiting game. All this trauma from Ticketmaster is like coming back. Oh my god. I really hope, 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 hope that it's easier on Inner Park, but I don't think it is. The whole website's pretty much in Korean. I have very little hopes that I will get a ticket, but I mean, hopefully I do. 
but yeah guys that's it for today's video just wanted to kind of like give you guys some helpful tips and also kind of just give you guys insight on my life the last two weeks because this is basically what I've been doing besides work so work and stressing and trying to keep up with all the BTS notifications merch drops hotel drops everything I do have a lot of stuff planned for this trip so you guys have a lot to look forward to when I say a lot I mean a lot I think there's a lot of things that you guys will want to see and yeah I can't wait to share all these experiences with you guys and before I go, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and make sure you guys turn on your post notifications so that you don't miss any of the videos that I'm going to post within the next month. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!